For this part of the lab, we're going to explore the phase relationship between the two spots in the TEM10 mode. So the laser set up with our cavity. It's lasing right now in the 1-0 mode. And I've added a few pieces, right? There's a polarizer over here, so I can control the intensity output. And then a mirror directs the beam off at a right angle past this holder where I'm going to be able, where I'm going to, be able, I'm going to put um, a double slit in this. So we're going to send our two-spot pattern into a double slit. And then it's going to go on our diffraction pattern. It's going to go on to this detector. This is basically just a, a one-dimensional camera. It's a series of a thousand little photodiodes all in a row, and its readout goes onto the oscilloscope. And right now it's saturated because the room lights are on. So I'm going to take a minute and put the other pieces in place and turn the lights off, and we'll just look at the scope output. But that's what the physical output we're looking at looks like. So there's our detector output. Right now I am just sending the, the, the two spot, the TE. M10 mode directly onto the detector. We can see the intensity um, uh, scan across the width of the pattern. You can see it definitely has a central minimum and two bright spots. Slightly different intensities, meaning I, I probably don't have the mode, the spot exactly symmetric. Now I've put in the double slit, and the beam is is hitting the the card just off to the side of the of the two slits. So I'm going to now translate the two slits. And there we see our familiar double slit interference pattern. Right now, one of the two lobes, one of the two spots in our TEM10 mode distribution, one spot is illuminating both slits. The size of the slit spacing and the size of the spots that have been scaled have been selected so that the two spots are just big enough, each of the two spots is just big enough to cover the pair of slits. And so now one spot is illuminating both slits and we see our usual double slit interference pattern. Now I'm going to translate a little more in the same direction. And we get this pattern which instead of having a central maximum, now has a central minimum. So at this position, one spot is illuminating each of the two double slits. Left spot going through the left slit, right spot going through the right slit. And we see not a central maximum, but a central minimum, from which we can infer that the two spots have to be 180 degrees out of phase. I keep going again in the same direction. Now the other spot is illuminating both slits, and again, we're back to our usual double slit interference pattern. Then I can keep translating it again in the same direction, and the pattern disappears entirely. Now I'm going to go back. All right, one spot illuminating both slits. You can see the minima go all the way to zero. Now there's a central maximum. One spot on each slit, and we have a central minimum. And one spot on both the slits, again, back to the central maximum. 